all comers record. He'd beaten Schoberg and Smith very comfortably there. He's 1 metre 95 tall. That converts to around 6 foot 5. And that was 2 metres 45, a new world record for Sotomayor. The only man who has gone over 243 or higher. And there it is. 8 feet in the air? Is that possible? Well, would you like to know how? Welcome to the Physics of Hydro. In the 1960s, athlete Dick Fosbury of Oregon State University developed another new technique that will bring the high jump into its modern form. Called the Fosbury Flop, the jumper approaches the bar with speed from an angle and throws his head, arms, and shoulders over the bar with his head facing up toward the sky. At the same time, the athlete arches his back in a curving motion over the bar while kicking his legs. The technique became the standard to start a new high record of almost 8 feet high. Everything you do up to the point of takeoff is very important. Why? Because it is the main factor that will determine how successful your bar clearance will be. 90% of the jump is in the approach. The high jump is difficult to perform due to the fact that a high jumper must run a curve. You need to be consistent when you run your curve. If you can put yourself in the correct position at takeoff consistently, you'll have more attempts and a better probability of making higher heights. Once you get comfortable with a consistent approach, you can practice and concentrate on other aspects of your jump, such as knee drive, hip rotation, and arch. As a high jumper, you must run your curve with inward lean, that is, your body must be leaning toward the center of the circle you are running. And most importantly, you must maintain that lean as you plant your takeoff foot and attempt to make bar clearance. If you don't do this, you might as well run straight at the bar. With that in mind, let's take a close look at the four basic components of the approach. Oh. Thank you. Number one, takeoff point. Most jumpers will find themselves at a point about one to two feet from the standard along the crossbar. From that point on the crossbar, it will be somewhere between 2.5 and, and 3.5 and feet perpendicular measured out, depending on your speed and jumping ability. Typically, the higher you jump, the further away from the crossbar you will find yourself when you plant your takeoff foot. Number 2. Takeoff Angle Next, you will choose your takeoff angle. Jumpers will sometimes say that their takeoff leg feels like it collapses when they plant and try to jump. One cause of this collapse is a takeoff angle that is too close to zero degrees, or possibly even parallel. It should never be parallel. This is very important. A good starting point is to be somewhere between 15 and 30 degrees. Number three, number of steps on the curve. Now you need to decide how many steps you will take on the curve portion of your approach. It is recommended that you use 5 steps as your starting point. Do not change this unless advised by your coach. Biomechanists I found that 5 steps is ideally what a jumper should be using. Number 4. Stride Length Your stride length makes you unique from every other jumper. This is the main variable that determines your approach. Your stride length on a curve determines how much distance you can cover in 5 steps. You will need to obtain a measurement of your stride length while running a curve. To accomplish this, you will need someone to assist you. Using a tape measure, mark a circle with a radius of about 25 feet. Then run the circle with the same tempo and rhythm you would normally use for your actual high jump approach. Remember to maintain inward lean while you do this. Have an assistant watch where each step lands on the circle's perimeter. You will then measure the distance between these steps. These four steps are the key to achieving consistency. 